If you own one of the Celestron motorized focusers, you're going to want to stay tuned because I'm going to show you a flaw in the hardware that Celestron supplies with this otherwise pretty good focuser can cause binding of the focuser. That can result in the focuser running wild. It can also surprisingly lead to excessive mirror flop. Not mirror shift, I'm talking about mirror flop. I will also show you how you can extend the focus range so that when you're working at F7, you have a little bit of extra room to focus as many people have reported that from time to time in F7, they're not able to quite get the scope in perfect focus. Before we get started, I would appreciate it if you would help me grow this channel by pressing the like button down below the video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. The problem with the Celestron hardware was discovered by my buddy Dave back in December when he was doing a complete teardown of his uh, Celestron C11. I was helping him with that and I filmed the entire teardown and reassembly process, which you can find as another video on my channel and I'll put a link to that one down below. But in any event, as he was taking the uh, focuser apart to release the mirror, he discovered the problem with Celestron's design. So uh, the main reason for tearing down the telescope, of course, was to try and improve the stability of the mirror so that when I'm doing focusing or meridian flips, the mirror doesn't move. And so what we are attempted to do is fix some of that by putting in some nylon screws along the baffle shafts to tighten up the mirror couplings. But we've learned in the process of tearing down the microscope or the telescope, um, that there's another area where it's probably just as critical, if not more critical, to pay attention to how the thing is mounted, and that's the focusing hardware. So what you're seeing in front of you right now is more or less the assembly as received from the factory when you buy the C11. It has a manual focus knob and it has this little orange plate, and I haven't had it completely in place right now because I want to disassemble it and show you what's going on. But this is what you receive when <clears throat> you get the, the thing from the factory. What I've done is, um, since then, I've taken out the manual focusing and want to go to a motorized focusing. So I'm going to show you what is done when you get that transition. And in that process of showing you, we're going to show you a design flaw in the, the mounting plate for the motorized focusing that I think is causing a great deal of problems in the stability of the mirror. So first step, let me just disassemble this. So first of all, you take out the plate that holds it all in place. You pull out the nut after you unthread it from the threaded rod on the mirror. And as it comes out, you'll see there's this rubber gasket in the back. So this rubber gasket introduces the ability for some play in the focusing mechanism. And we, we think we're going to take that out and just have it removed. Um, as it turns out, the bearing height here has a 0.3 millimeter interference with this plate. And so the factory version of this puts this in and tightens a good vert clamp onto this, the bearings which are fixed and then the, the nut rotates when it's changing focus. When you switch to the motorized one, you take this plate and give it up and you put this other plate in place of it so that you can actually mount the motor to the plate. As it turns out, um, when the one they send to you has a diameter that's too big for this plate to mount inside here and seat on this reference surface that's the clamping surface for the bearing. And so when you clamp this in in the original configuration that's sent to you, you don't actually get a tight clamp on these bearings. And because you don't get a tight clamp, there's a lot of play in this. I'm going to show you how much play you can get in this by threading it onto the mirror nut that's used for the focus. Okay, so now it's threaded on there, and you can see, if I just wiggle this, there's lots of play here. And that's all back and forth, and there's some up and down. Well, the up and down is your backlash, but this tilt is play that the mirror weight can cause some motion in the telescope when it's sitting in place. If you don't clamp this down tight against the reference surface, you can't take out this play. But if you do clamp it down tight against the reference surface, you can take out the back and forth play, just not the vertical play, which is the backlash of the nut on the threaded rod. So what I did to fix this is I actually reduced the diameter of the OD 
of the part that comes from Celestron so that it will fit inside and seat onto that reference surface and seat correctly on there and clamp the bearing in it really tight and snug. And as I, when I assemble this again later, we're not going to use the gasket either. We're just going to have this plate clamping the bearing stack in place very tightly after we've aligned the nut onto the threaded rod when the mirror is in place. So now we're going to actually assemble the focusing mechanism and put the motor on and make sure that the motor can drive the mirror in and out. And we're just going to put in the bearing stack with the nut and the way you do that is you just thread it on. You can see there's still lots of play in this now because the, the threaded rod for the mirror is actually pretty snug but this nut is pretty loose. So the first step is just to screw it all the way in until it makes contact, which I just got. And now we're going to try and put the plates in. The other should be easier. So now we've uh, snugged down the plate against the reference uh, surface and actually we have a really good rigid fit here and I can turn the nut easy where it looks like we're ready to go for putting on the motor. So was Dave just unlucky and the adapter plate he got with his focus motor uh, was not machined correctly? No. In fact, a few months after we um, did Dave's teardown, I was having problems with my focuser. And I found that as I gave it a command to focus, it would not respond. It was actually binding up. And this has been reported by lots of other people out there who have a similar Celestron motorized focuser, not only on C11s, but on C8s, C9 and a quarters, and whatever. The other thing that I noticed it, when it bound up and I canceled the uh, focus command, the focuser would wildly rewind thousands of counts in the opposite direction. And I notice other people have seen this as well. So as you can see here, my adapter plate also does not fit all the way in there correctly. It rocks because the back of this is resting on the cast aluminum plate, not on this machine surface. So it's not able to put the pressure on this bearing structure to hold this in place. And let me show you by uh, putting this back in. So I've screwed down the adapter plate that Celestron supplied with the focus motor and I've tightened the screws reasonably well and I've centered this shaft uh, according to the Celestron instructions. And take a look. You see that this shaft can wobble in either direction. So that's certainly going to cause some mirror flop, which you don't expect that from the focuser. Mirror shift, yes, but not mirror flop. In addition to which, at certain points in the focus travel, this shaft can become uh, misaligned and because it's not being held in place as it should be. And when that happens, that's when the motor binds up and freezes, which has happened to me, as I said, and other people, lots of other people have reported that as well. And some people have even pointed out that these screws seem to come loose uh, after they have a binding event and they take the focuser off and check what's going on. So because this plate is not holding on to the the bearing shaft, it's not locking it down. Now let me put the original plate that came with this telescope in instead of the uh, adapter plate for the focus motor. And I'll show you, you have none of this wobble at all with this plate in there. So now I've reinstalled the original uh, plate that was in there and tightened the screws down and the focuser moves freely, but there is no wobble in the shaft. And that's exactly how it should be with the adapter plate that comes with the motorized focuser, but it doesn't. So the original plate that was in here is flat on both sides. 
and the adapter plate that comes with it has a recess on the backside that is designed to put pressure on this bearing shaft. So if it worked as planned, the outside edge would rest on this machine surface and then you would have a controlled amount of compression on this shaft as it is. Now this one would just be pressing, pressing on that shaft, but that gasket that Dave showed you that he took out, which is on the other side, on the inside of the focuser shaft, would allow some compression, presumably, and allow this to lock that down um, against this surface here, because it's only a millimeter or less that this thing sticks up. So Dave's solution for this problem, as you saw in the video, was turn down the diameter of this adapter plate so that it would rest in here against that machine surface like it's supposed to. And that's one good way of doing it. And the advantage of doing that, if you have the equipment to turn this down easily, is that you can use the original screws that come with this. And the screws are these M3 25 millimeter screws. Now, I decided I didn't want to do that. And I thought, well, why can't I just put this original plate in there and put this one on top? And that way I am putting the pressure I need on that bearing surface. The problem is these original 25 millimeter screws will not reach. So I went to the hardware store and I got myself some 30 millimeter M3 screws. Now I couldn't find black anodized screws, uh, but these will work just fine. And when I install it this way, everything is locked down tight. So let me reinstall it and show you. Now I've installed both the original plate and the new adapter plate with the longer screws, tightened them down and got this as centered as I can. And you can see the mirror will focus pretty easily. No problem rotating that shaft. And also there is no wobble in that shaft, just like it was with the original plate in uh, place to begin with. So I think that will take out uh, some part of the mirror flop that happens as you're imaging uh, across the sky and taking multiple exposures over a long period of time. Dave did the other solution to his and has seen a noticeable improvement in the amount of image drift uh, which would be associated with that extra mirror flop. Now you can't eliminate all the mirror flop that's inherent to these uh, SCT designs uh, by Celestron and how they focus the uh, by moving the primary mirror. But I think you'll find that if you measure your image drift before you make this change and after you make this change, you'll see a noticeable improvement. So as I mentioned earlier, the other thing Dave discovered during his teardown was a way to increase the travel of the mirror just a little bit, which was enough to solve the problem he was having getting focus consistently at F7, which as I said before, is something that other people have reported as well. So in order to see that, I'm gonna to have to take out the screw in the center of this shaft and pull this mechanism out. So just as Dave has done, I've taken this screw, which goes down the center of the shaft and screws into this threaded rod attached to the mirror. This is what holds this whole focusing mechanism onto that threaded shaft. Now you can't quite see down in the center of this shaft in this video, but take my word on it. It's not one diameter, inner diameter all the way through. There's actually a shelf down in this region. And this screw has this washer on it. And this washer comes in contact with that shelf and stops this thing from moving uh, in on that shaft further. So that's what limits the travel in one direction. Now in Dave's case, I'll show you the pictures here in a moment of his screw and the piece on there. He had one big fat piece on there on the end and that was preventing him from traveling as far as he needed to in all situations to focus at F7. Now he could focus at F7, but I think because of you know thermal effects with heating and cooling of the tube, there were times where he couldn't quite get enough travel to perf perfectly focus, which other people have said as well. Now, mine is a little different. Mine has that fat washer, but it's relieved 
So it looks like they figured out this problem focusing at F7 by the time they built and sold my C11, which is maybe three or four years after Dave bought his. So in my case, I haven't noticed any trouble yet focusing at F7. Um, but if I do, I can do what Dave did. And Dave essentially replicated this relief structure by adding smaller washer in front of the bigger washer, the original bigger washer in the back. And by doing that, it allows it to travel enough past that relief with the first washer before it engages the second washer. So that's what helped him increase his travel for focusing at F7. Well, I hope you found this video useful and uh, I would appreciate it if you haven't done so already. Please like the video by pressing the like button down below and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also check out my website, californiaskies.com, where you can find more content like this as well. And if you haven't already watched the teardown video of Dave's C11, I'll put a link to that teardown video down below. You'll find it helpful in um, case you ever have to open up your SCT partially or even completely. So thank you for watching and tune in to some of my other videos.